Welcome back, boys and girls, friends from all around. We've hit it. We've reached season two of Not Breaker. My channel is going to be more of a seasonal thing. I might put a few things during the summer, but for the most part, we're just going to be seasonal. I'm far too large to be doing things outside in the summertime. <laughs> so, anyway, a friend of mine uh, was talking to me and asking me about what I do for chainsaw maintenance after a long day of cutting and whatnot. Well, if you're lazy like me, you just put your saw away in March and uh, or April, and then you pull it back out in October and clean it up, get ready for the season. The way I see it, if all that oil and stuff like that sits on all those parts, they can't rust. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, yeah, it is just lazy. It's laziness. But we're going to get down to the meat and bones of this thing. Um, there are several tools you need when doing this. And my saw is different than some of your guys' saws. Some of your guys have uh, homeowner saws. I have a professional saw. I'm not a professional. I just have a professional saw. Uh, in the last clip, you saw me take the bar and chain off. I leave it in the scabbard just because it holds everything together. Keeps it all in one piece. Doesn't bind up your chain like they like to do in an instant. You'll see that later in the video. I hope you guys have been good this summer. hope you guys had a productive and relaxing summer at the same time. We're just going to tear down this um, clutch assembly here so we can blow off in there. If you don't have an air compressor, uh, go get one. I know times are tough and things aren't affordable right now, but even a little small pancake compressor or something like that, it's not going to hit you in the head too hard when it comes to price. But we're going to tear down this clutch assembly so we can blow it out as well. And I made a dumb mistake. Uh, you'll see here shortly. But let's just wait for that because I like to prolong my inevitable failures <laughs> but uh, we'll tear this thing down get her blown out and get this clutch cleaned up or this um, oh shoot I can't think of the name of it right now clutch cover it also uh, stops your chain from spinning because it's also the brake it's kind of like a little brake drum Look at me being super technical <laughs> with my terminology and stuff. Give me a break on this video, guys. It's been a long summer. A hot one, too. But, uh, give me a little bit of a break. I'll get back to my normal schedule. I tried to keep this video under 20 minutes because I didn't want to bore you guys too much, but I also need to get my um, watch hours up. So, if I can get those up, then I can go back to making some shorter videos. I'm like a thousand hours away from what's required for you to be monetized. I'd really like to get monetized by the, uh, by the end of the season, which will be in March or April. I'll get bored with doing this for a while and it'll start getting warm and I definitely won't be out there cutting wood and swinging axes and stuff like that. You cannot put this clutch cover back on without first replacing the bearing. This is kind of a blooper <clears throat> and a learning moment for both of us. But you have to put this bearing back on before you put the clutch cover on. I just use a little ballast awl. It might not be what everybody does, but just to lubricate those bearings. They're pin bearings in there. Ballast awl is really good. It seeps into the metal better than other uh, lubricants and penetrants that I've found.
right about here is where I made my mistake. You see it yet? Hey dummy, put your sprocket back on. <laughs> put your sprocket back on first, stupid. That's okay, we did it off camera before we put the saw back together, so not a huge deal. When putting these clips back on, um, you can use the screwdriver. I've done it in the field before, um, but it's not the best tool for it. See, it's taking me a little bit to get it on there. No, no, says I. Let's go get a little round chisel. Or punch. <laughs> round chisel. I am all on top of it today. Go get a punch. And two hits, it pops on there. No problem. You still forgot your sprocket. But uh, we'll put that back on. As I was saying before, the, um, the farm boss saws have a different kind of clutch cover. They don't have a detachable sprocket or any of that stuff. Homeowner saws, farm ball saws. Saw guys know what I'm talking about. Just blow out your cover, take your air cleaner off, blow it out. I mean this is simple maintenance and you should do it a lot more often than once a year put that thing back on there before you go blowing anything else out in the um, motor compartment you don't want to be blowing a bunch of debris down inside your motor you just pop your cover back on I know there's been umpteen videos about this subject, but I'm just showing how I do it for my subscribers. This is something I do. Uh, I know a lot of people don't because they don't really care. It's a saw, but I've also had people say, you don't use those saws. Look how clean they are. Ain't no way you use those saws. Tell us you're brand new without telling us you're brand new. Well, I've been running this saw for a few years and there's a reason it looks the way it does because I like to take care of it. Give it a good wipe down. There again, ballastol, ballistol. I'm not 100% sure of the pronunciation of that, but regardless of how you pronounce it, it's a very good protectant. Um, it penetrates, like I said. So, notice I wiped down the outside of the saw before I wiped in the chain area. Now I'm going to take some WD-40 because I've always been under the assumption that WD-40 uh, does a really good job at releasing pitch, stuff like that that gets built up inside of there. So we're just going to coat it down really good and we're going to let it sit uh, for a good five minutes or so. or just until you get done doing what you're doing you can wipe it out you'll see the results of it see how quick that chain snapped and tried to bind up chainsaw chain is something else buddy I'm just going to blow this off another important part that a lot of people miss is blowing down the inside and that track there that the chain rides in a lot of debris and stuff gets built up in there over time so you definitely want to blow that out as well the best you can I'm running about a hundred PSI or so nothing too crazy just to uh, make sure we got enough force you blow down inside of those tracks 
blow off the sprocket a little bit and then we're going to do the same thing that we did to the inside of the saw uh, to the bar remove all the pitch and stuck on tree saps and whatnot if you cut some walnut like I do you got a little bit of that nasty stuff that comes off of it same thing as the air we're going to blow down in this track with the WD-40 just to loosen all that stuff up if there's any this is a fairly new bar but if there's any in there we're going to loosen it up you can see how dark it is coming out the track there right in front of my foot nothing spectacular here just blow the chain off I probably should have coated it in WD-40 as well, but it's a fairly new chain. I got the chain and bar at the same time, so it's a fairly new chain. I'm not too concerned with pitch build up on it. Blowing that WD-40 out of there, and all the gunk it's holding on to, and you can see how clean it comes. Let me just give it a quick wipe down, remove the excess, and you're good to go. Same with the bar. I had to do a little extra scrubbing on the bar. I'm not gonna lie to you. But it came out pretty clean. And we're gonna attach, attack this clutch cover. Somebody in the comments uh, correct me on the terminology of the little piece that goes over the clutches, the, the little drum that helps you, uh, that activates the. Um, chain break. I know, I'm sure somebody will anyway. That's what YouTube's good for. If you say something wrong, somebody's got to correct you. Well, you can see how clean everything came out. I'm just going to put everything back together. Give it one final quick wipe down afterwards and start it up I'm glad that um, I didn't lose many if any subscribers over the summer but thank you all for being here honestly from the bottom of my heart it means a lot to me that you guys stuck with me and put up with my absence and stuff I wasn't sure I was gonna come back to this but I only felt it was right I started this journey might as well keep on it so thank you guys again, and thank you all the new subscribers. Hopefully we get to a thousand um, by the end of December. That'd be lovely. I know that's a tall order to ask, but at least by the end of the season, I hope to be to a thousand subs and four thousand watch hours, so I can get monetized. I'm not looking to make a career out of this, but it'd be nice to be paid for my effort. I put a lot into recording these videos. Uh, you see me holding the end of the bar up here. I don't know that that actually does anything. It's just something I've done in practice and I know the bar moves and that's just what I was told. You're supposed to hold the bar up when you tighten it down. I get the chain pretty tight here because I understand that it's going to stretch a little bit. It's going to loosen up with use. So I don't get it banjo string tight, but I get it pretty tight. Like I said, one quick final wipe down on everything. I mean, it looks like a daggone new saw in my opinion.
I just believe in keeping my things clean and nice. Spent a lot of money on some chainsaws and I want to keep them up. Some of you might have noticed uh, the gas tank on the saw it did have a little bit of gas in it. If I would use anything but Amsoil, I would have dumped it out, but Amsoil has a stabilizer in it. And I don't know how long it's good for exactly, but this saw has been sitting uh, since the last video I used it in. It's not been used since, not been started since, not been touched. It's been looked at, but not touched. You always shake your can a little bit before you pour your gas in. It's basic common knowledge. Maybe you want to mix up the oils and gas. Always use, if you can, at all costs, always use non-ethanol in two-stroke stuff. Keep you from building up carbon on top of your piston. I mean, ethanol is just bad for the lines in the saw and everything. The gas lines and all that. Ethanol is terrible. I feel like it's probably one of the dumbest things we've ever done as a society. But that's just my opinion. Here's the moment you guys have been waiting for. Let's start her up. I always like to show that I did indeed cold start it. You wouldn't be able to touch that muffler. If you ran it for 30 seconds, you wouldn't be able to touch that muffler. But cold start. Here we go. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Welcome back to Not Breaker. This is season two. We're gonna do a lot of things this season, a lot of different things. There will be some wood splitting and ax work, but keep your edges sharp and clean. Until next time, folks, God bless you.